What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we're taking a look at some ultra-wide 1440p benchmarks on three of NVIDIA's highest-end cards that they have out right now. We have the RTX 2080 Ti, the RTX 3070, and the RTX 3080, and we're going to stack them up side by side and see how they perform at 3440 by 1440. I've seen a lot of benchmarking videos with these new cards at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, but I haven't really seen a lot about ultra-wide resolution, so I wanted to put something out. Now if you're running ultra-wide 1080p, I would say all of these cards are overkill and they're more money than you need to spend, and you really should look at something more like the 3060 Ti instead. That said, let's jump into some games and see how it really does. First up, we got the benchmark from Strange Brigade. This is pushing a whole bunch of frames on all the systems. You can see that on the left we have the 2080 Ti, and it's doing a little bit better than the 3070, which is in the center. And then on the right, the 3080 is on like another level kind of than both of them. All three of these cards are going to be able to push a good high performance, high refresh rate, ultra wide experience in a game like Strange Brigade. But you can see here in the results that the 1080 Ti got 155, the 3070 got 143, and then the 3080 managed to put out 188 frames per second. Next up we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this is a pretty demanding game. It's definitely going to push these to their, their limits, and um, you can see that the 3070 is just doing above 60 frames per second. Then over the 2080 Ti is doing closer to 70, and then the uh, 3080 is pushing more like 75 to 80. So there really isn't a huge performance spread between these in this game, at least what you can see here in the benchmark. All of them are going to give you, you know, an over 60 frames experience, but they're not going to push like a super high refresh type of experience. VRAM is not really an issue, it shows all the cards are using about 6 gigabytes. And here are the results, the, the lowest one we have is the 3070 in the center at 69. Then the 2080 Ti put out 77, and just a little bit higher than that, the 3080 was able to put out 82 frames per second. Next up is Watch Dogs Legion. I wanted to throw in some ray tracing and see how these all performed with more of the features and bells and whistles turned on. So we're running Ultra Graphics, Ray Traced Reflections on High, and DLSS on Balance Mode. Here in the benchmark, the 2080 Ti on the left is keeping it right around 60 frames per second. The 3070 in the center though, however, is struggling and it's running down in the high 40s to about 50 frames per second. Then the 3080 on the right is pushing well over 60, up closer to 70, 75 frames per second. You'll notice some pretty bad stutter and dips on the 3070 and if you look at the VRAM usage, it's using all 8 gigabytes of that GDDR6, so if you're planning on gaming at ultra wide resolution, you may want to look past the 3070 to a 10 or 11 gig card because once you start running out of that VRAM you're going to have some serious performance impact and maybe it could be even more significant here since we're running with DLSS and ray tracing. Um, it could be maybe even more detrimental to performance when you run out of memory. I'm not like a, a computer scientist or nothing but those are some pretty significant frame rate drops. You see it's dropping down below 30 frames per second even. But both of the other cards are pretty good. Um, on the 2080 Ti you could probably kick a couple of settings down one notch and you'd be up over 60 frames. And here in the final results we've got an average of 60 frames per second on the 2080 Ti, an average of 46 on the 3070, and 76 on the 3080. So that 46 to 76, that's a pretty huge difference. Next up, Forza Horizon 4, and all of these cards are going to be able to push this at a high refresh rate. This is a couple years older, and it was a console game originally, so the afterburner overlay also doesn't work in this, so we're just going to go ahead and skip to the results. Here you can see all three of these cards were able to push a nice high refresh rate experience for Forza Horizon 4. We've got 145 frames per second on the 2080 Ti, 141 frames per second on the 3070, and then 156 frames per second on the RTX 3080. Next game we're taking a look at, this is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're running in the Vulcan API, and we have the settings, uh, a mix of various stuff. Mostly high, but a few things on ultra, a few things on medium maybe. This benchmark has a few different sections. Uh, I usually just look at the last part, but I wanted to throw this one in here too. Um, you can see here we've got about 
10 frames per second a piece. It goes from about 85 to 95 to 105 as you go up from 3070 to 2080 Ti to 3080. And a little more interesting in this scene, uh, we still have the the 2080 Ti still running about 10 frames per second better over the 3070, but it's much closer between the 2080 Ti and the 3080. And if you'll notice up there in the corner, the 3080 is not reaching full utilization. It's sitting at like, you know, 85 to 90%. So this is with a 9900K at 5 gigahertz. I'm not 100% sure if this is some sort of CPU limitation or maybe a, a RAM bottleneck or something. Um, you can see at times it's hitting full utilization, but it's not being pushed as hard as the other cards. So I don't think we're seeing as large of a difference in the FPS between the 2080 Ti and 3080 in this test for whatever reason. All of them are able to keep up well ultra wide though, even the uh, 3070 with its 8 gigs of VRAM, um, it's still pushing over 60 here in San Denis. This is like the most taxing part of the whole benchmark right here. So if you if it's keeping 75 here, it's going to do plenty good in the game. Now looking here at the final results, we've got 77 on the 3070, 88 on the 2080 Ti, and 93 on the 3080. One last gaming benchmark I wanted to put in here. This is Horizon Zero Dawn, and uh, this is another game for whatever reason. I couldn't get the afterburner overlay to work. So skipping to the results, on the 2080 Ti we've got an average of 86 frames per second, 82 on the 3070, and then 100 frames per second on the 3080. So this one was a much larger gap between the uh, 3080 and the rest of them. While I was running tests, I thought I might as well throw some synthetic benchmarks in here. So first up, let's take a look at 3 d Mark Time Spy. This is a DirectX 12 gaming benchmark. And here are the Time Spy results. We have 14,000 or so on the 2080 Ti. We got 13,300 on the 3070, and then 15,600 on the 3080. Next is 3 d Mark's DirectX 12 ray tracing benchmark. This is 3 d Mark Port Royal. And on this test, you can see the 2080 Ti got a score of 9,483, the 3070 at 7,911, and then the 3080 broke 10,000 with 10,765. So for ray tracing performance, the 3080 again is definitely a, a tier higher than these other two cards. Thanks for watching along. I hope this video was entertaining and or helpful. You know, um, all of these cards are going to give you a pretty good experience if you're gaming at 3440 by 1440. I'm not going to lie. I would maybe avoid the 3070 just because that 8 gigabytes of VRAM could impact performance negatively in some games going forward, like we saw in Watch Dogs Legion. But again, VRAM, that's kind of something you could maybe turn down your anti-aliasing or textures a level and that could get you you know under the VRAM limit so it's really up to you and what you want to spend and really what you can get your hands on at this point in time I would say anyways thanks for watching like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video